In a previous video, we finished this beautiful PCB and prepared everything for manufacturing. But what do we do with the surplus time we have during the manufacturing process? Hmm. How about we design and build an enclosure for this PCB to make the whole project more functional and complete? In this video, we'll see how we can use the 3D file that's generated by KeyCAD as a reference to build a custom enclosure that fits perfectly with your PCB. Along with that, we'll also look into choosing the right 3D modeling software and some basics of mechanical CAD applications. Let's start with getting the 3D model out of KeyCAD so we can use it as a reference. But if your PCB isn't complete and is missing some of the components on the 3D model, we have a dedicated video explaining how to fix that as well. So make sure to check the iCard on this video. Exporting this PCB as a 3D file is pretty easy. Go to the PCB layout editor, click on file, export and select the step file. On the pop-up, make sure to click on this checkboxes. Select a path where you want the step file to be generated and then click on export. It should take a couple of seconds to load all the 3D files into a single step file. Once it's done, the file will be moved to the destination we selected. Here we can open this file in any 3D program that supports step file. But there is something very interesting that we can do if we pair this with a slicer program like Prusa. It not only lets us visualize the PCB, but with a few tweaks, it can slice the generated step file for 3D printing, which would give us a better understanding of the final PCB before manufacturing, which I think is pretty cool and saves us a lot of time in fixing some expensive mistakes. Anyway, once we have the step file, we can use almost any 3D modeling software to design the enclosure. But there are some key differences that we need to know before choosing the right 3D modeling software for mechanical CAD. First, these programs are divided into two categories, mesh-based modeling and parametric-based modeling. In short, mesh-based modeling programs are like working with clay. You can design in any shape with almost no restrictions. But once you make any changes, there is no way of going back to the original structure. A very good example for this type of program would be Blender, Maya or Cinema 4D. Now, parametric based modeling tools are very strict engineering oriented modeling tools that uses sketch, dimension and constraint to build a 3D model. Since the final 3D model is just a computation done by the CAD based on all the inputs that we gave. So this makes it fixing mistakes super easy down the line. The best example for this type of software are FreeCAD, Fusion 360 and Onshape. In PCB Cupid, we love to use open source software, but here, even though we have an option for open source CAD program like FreeCAD, it has a very steep learning curve for beginners. So as an alternative, we are looking to use Onshape, which is super easy to learn and works on almost any machine with a web browser. The major catch is all the designs that you create will be publicly available to everyone. This isn't a big issue in our case since the project is open source, but just be aware if you're working on a personal or a closed source project. To get started with Onshape, just go to onshape.com and sign up for the free version. Once you log in, you'll end up on the project page. In my case, it looks a little messy because I was testing out a bunch of projects along with Onshape's features and functionality. So to keep things a little tidier, let's create a new folder for this project. Go to create and click on new folder. I'll name this LoRa. With the folder setup, let's bring in the step files that's exported from KeyCAD. Go to create, import files and select the step file. On this pop-up, make sure to select Combine to a single part, Join adjacent surfaces and Create composite part. This will make sure to combine all the different components on the step file into a single component that is easy to use on Onshape. Parallelly, this will also improve the performance if you have numerous components in your PCB. Anyway, once the required PCBs are imported, we can create a new document where we can model the enclosure. Click on Create, New Document and I'll name this master case. You would know why I'm referring this as a master case if you have been watching our hardware counter series. So make sure to check that series to know how this entire PCB is built from scratch. Once you have created the project, it should take you to the part studio page where we can design the enclosure. Okay, I'm going to give a disclaimer here. I'm not an expert in mechanical CAD or on shape, but with this video, you should be able to do enclosure for most of your PCB project. And if you are interested in learning more, I'll make sure to drop a few links in the description where you can learn more about mechanical CAD and Onshape. As I said before, Onshape is a parametric modeling software that strictly relies on dimension and constraints. So we are going to use the step file that we imported as a reference to give us an accurate dimension on all the axes for designing the enclosure. In Onshape, we have a tool called Derive, which will help in referring to other designs or models as a reference for the new design that we are going to create. 
you can find this on the top toolbar and once we click on it we can select the part that we can use as a reference in this case i'll navigate and select the master pcb once the file is imported we can pretty easily navigate this document by scrolling the wheel to zoom in and zoom out right click to orbit around middle click drag to pan across and finally to quickly change to a different view we can click on this floating cube well if you have noticed this looks little odd the pcb been imported somewhere on the side of the document rather than in the center let's quickly fix this on the bottom left you can select the entire pcb with just a click then use the transform tool from the toolbar or we can use the search to find the tool here in the properties select translate by line with that move the part by using this ui and bring the part to the origin it is a little hard to bring the pcb to the origin just on the single view so i'm constantly changing different views to make sure the pcb is centered properly from all the angles well we have the pcb in the center now and also we got the annoying planes along with it but this is where we'll be drawing the sketches and extruding them into the 3d space so for our purpose we just need the top plane and we can hide the front and right plane by using this i icon now i just want to mention something here it's totally not necessary to get the 3d model as the reference for the enclosure design we can just measure the physical pcb and then translate those values into cad but there are some edge cases that we might not consider or say often easy to overlook one of the best example would be the excess component leads and the solder joint which we could have easily overlooked if you are not using a 3d model so just by using pcb 3d model we are reducing the potential risk of making mistakes during mechanical cad development since i just pointed out about the component lead and soldering joint why not let's start from there hmm we cannot sketch on the top plane as it's exactly on the pcb and we need some offset which brings the plane below the soldering joints and we can do this by creating another plane with an offset to do that go to the plane tool on the toolbar and then on the options select the plane that we are going to offset in this case we are going to offset the top plane then adjust the plane until we are happy with the offset since there is no use for the top plane anymore let me hide this as well with a new plane setup we can start with a 2d sketch that will transform into a 3d model click on the sketching tool on the top toolbar and select the plane where we need to sketch now one way to reference this pcb is to sketch around it using various tools on this toolbar but there's a better way where we can project the lines and shape of this pcb onto the sketching plane to give us more accurate dimensions we can do that by using the keyboard shortcut or the project tool here once the tool is selected just click on the shapes and lines that we want to project on the sketch in this case we'll mainly focus on the mounting holes and the edges of the pcb once we have that done we can temporarily hide this pcb to have a better view of the projection that looks amazing but we don't want to directly use this lines or the mounting holes because that's going to give us zero tolerance in both manufacturing the pcb and in the 3d printing process so to account for that we need to use this projections as a reference and construct a secondary sketch around this for that we need to convert this projection lines into a construction line in basic term construction lines act as a reference but don't interfere when we convert the sketch into a 3d model now to convert the projected lines just select all of them and click on the construction tool this should convert everything into a dotted lines With that we can now offset and draw new sketches that will help us account for tolerance during manufacturing or other design decisions that we like to make. Until now all this was just a setup. Now this is where the actual design is going to start. Use the circle tool to draw a circle around the reference circles and add some dimensions slightly larger than the reference using the dimension constraint that's over here. Here you can see the new circle is still a construction line. that's because the construction tool was active previously so we can just select the new circle and make sure to click on the construction tool again to bring the lines back into usable lines with that you just have to repeat this process with the remaining mounting holes now i'll do the same for the edge of the pcb as well but this time we'll use the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle around the pcb and add some offset dimension to the width of the pcb to account for tolerance and increase the height of the case to give some space for adding an antenna and some space on the bottom for enclosure mounting holes then for a little bit of aesthetics i'm going to add a rounded corner to this enclosure for that we'll use the fillet tool and select the two edges where we need the fillet then enter the radius of the fillet 
I would say something between two and five should be good, and I'm going to go with four. Here, I'm going to offset this line and create a new line using the offset tool. It might be confusing why I'm doing this, but don't worry. I'll explain later why this is useful. Once that is done, we'll select all the parts with the sketch. Just make sure to select all the sketches and haven't missed anything. And then use the extrude icon over here on the top. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Shift plus E. This will extrude the sketch into the 3D space. And we can use this arrow to adjust the extrusion. Once we are happy with the height, just click on this button over here. This almost covers the entire PCB. For now, don't worry about the excess parts that are sticking out. Those will be our cutouts for power and accessing the screw terminal. Now, this might look like an enclosure, but it's just a solid block and has no space for placing the PCB inside it. So our next task would be to make this hollow, slice it up into two parts and add mounting holes which are used for assembly. Let's start one by one. First, make this solid hollow. To do this, Onshape has a tool called Shell. Once you select the tool, select the option hollow and select the part that we like to make hollow. You might see there is no difference at first, but we haven't sliced it up to see what's inside. But before that, we need to change the thickness of the shell and we can do that over here. Make sure this option is set to outward and enter the thickness of the enclosure we would like to have. In my case, I'm going to choose 2mm to make this more rigid. With that, we can go about slicing this part into two. Let's hide plane one and turn on the top plane. This top plane will act as the cutting tool that will divide this part into two. For this, Onshape provides a tool called split. Here we can select the part to split and then select the splitting tool, which in our case is the top plane. Once you apply the split tool, you can see it created two parts on the bottom left pane. To check if the split is correct, we can hide either of the part to see if our PCB fits perfectly within this case. Now just to avoid confusion, I'll make sure to rename this parts. Just do a right click and click on rename. And I'll name this bottom case and similarly the other part top case. Okay, that looks good now. Let's use the power of parametric modeling to prove why it's better than Blender or other mesh based modeling tools. For that, we are going back to the sketch that we created earlier. Just double click on sketch one which should let us edit the sketch. Now here, yeah, I'm going to offset the second line with a thickness of 1.3 mm by using the offset tool, which will later extrude to help us mount both the sides of the case. Now, if I directly save the sketch, the model will be messed up a bit. That's because we are editing the old sketch and those new parts of the sketch are not included in the features that we further used. But it's okay, as it's a very easy fix. Just make sure to go to the features and select the newly created sketch as well. We can see it's not that hard to add new features to the part without redoing the whole design again. And that's the real power of parametric modeling. Anyway, now let's extrude the new design on the bottom case. So let's hide the top case and select the new part of the sketch. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Now use the extrude tool and turn on the second end position as well and extrude on both the side with the help of arrow and apply these settings. Well, this created a new third part, but we need this part to be part of the bottom case. And to do that, we can use the boolean tool to combine these two parts into one. And we can see that we have combined both parts successfully. With that, we just have one more thing to do on the bottom part of the case. That's having an option for eat inserts to mount the PCB firmly onto the case. By now, we should know the power of parametric modeling. So we'll just go back to our sketch one and add a circle to the existing mounting holes that we created using the PCB as a reference. These extra part will act as a support to hold the eat inserts in place. Once we have the part added and applied, it should mess up the part just like before. So we'll just go to the extrude feature to include the newly created sketches. That should fix the part and bring us right back to where we started. And we are going to extrude the new sketches until the face of this PCB. And here we go. Just like before, we just created four new parts. Now we can either use the boolean tool to combine all these parts together 
or we can just change the settings during extruding to add to combine all this patch automatically. Hmm, here all the mounting holes looks good, but except for this individual one over here, that's because this can easily break off because of lack of support. So we are going to add a chamfer which will add more support to this part where we'll be using the heat insert. That completes our bottom case design. Damn, so much work just to finish the bottom part of the case. But trust me, this process will help in when you're doing projects for a long term. Since the video is quite long already, we'll make a part 2 of this video which will help you make the top case of this design and 3D print it. So if you have any questions so far, make sure to drop them in PCB Cupid Q&A section. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more content related to PCB. Until the next video, keep learning and keep creating.